Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I wanted to do a follow-up to the previous video, which was on my installation and build of the Voron Zero screen. There were several folks that chimed in on YouTube or in the Discord, just with some ideas, maybe some questions as well that made me think. So I've went in and I've looked at what all can you use the screen for? How do I want to use it? And uh, I made some changes to the configuration file. And now I have all the options on there that I want to use for my Voron Zero. This is going to be a quick video just to show you how you might be able to set this up similarly for your purposes. And you can also, in the description, find the link to my configuration file. Okay, so one of the first things you'll notice is that I no longer have smearing on the screen, which is where you see those kind of artifacts, like there was like a white artifact, and I'll, I'll show a quick picture of that in the video here. And then you can also see that I've got the box pretty much centered now, so nothing is off the screen. It's all kind of centered into the frame. So some of my more astute viewers noticed that, and just gave me some quick pointers and special call out to them. Um, something else that I wanted to do was I just kind of wanted to reorder some things in my menu and make sure that I had everything in here. So I figure, um, you know, some of the first things I'm typically going to do is just go right ahead and maybe I'll want to print directly off of the SD card. Another thing, of course, is um, like loading filament or homing the printer. So you can do a lot of that through here if you want manually. Um, and then I've got the temperature. So the the thing that I was the file that I was using did not have like I think it only had PLA and ABS. I added PETG and TPU, so those are in here as well. Um, you can just go in here and click on here. Preheat menu will have preheat all, hot hot end or heated bed. So I thought that was kind of nice to have. But um, one thing that I did add, which I find helpful, is this level bed. So when you go into a level bed, some of the things you're going to want to do are you know, you might want a home. I actually built into the start menu um, G-code that homes in as well because you can't run the, level, the bed leveling without homing first. And then you also need accept or adjusted. So when you're turning the screws, um, you need to hit adjusted. If, if you're not turning them much, then you hit accept. I'll go through that in a minute on how that works. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna demonstrate what I do to level the bed. So I go to level the bed and I'm gonna preheat because I like to make sure that I can have a heated bed while I'm preheating. I think it helps. So you can see that it's going to just do the 260, which is what I've defined it at. Once that is preheated, then I'm going to go back to level the bed, and I'm going to say start. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to home the printer because you need to be home before you can do the bed leveling procedure. And of course, I'm going to have to go ahead and open my door to do this. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in here. And basically, um, that, that feels pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. That one feels a little tight, so I'm going to loosen it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, I'm going to toggle down to adjusted. That one seems just right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. Now, since I did hit adjust it, it's going to make me go through it again and just double check everything. So there you have it, bed leveling off from the menu. Okay, now let's say I want to print something. So I've, I've actually got quite a few files on here. As you can see, there's like 75. The order that they're in is, I believe it's alphabetical, um, and it puts the numbers first. So it may take a little bit of time to sort through this. There may be other sorting options as well, but I haven't really looked into that yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click that one. And I'm gonna try this. I renamed the file to something shorter. I'm gonna click Start Printing. Okay, so that worked. So apparently there's a bug with this clipper display that um, if you have long file names, it doesn't seem to work right. I'm not sure what, that all, what all that's about. Okay, and as you can see, the print has started and it's gone. One of the other killer features for me is this uh, safely shut down button. So a lot of times I'll just be printing, having finished a print, and I'm like, oh man, I gotta shut the thing down now. I don't wanna have to get on the, the phone or on my computer, so I just wanna do it from the screen. So I can do that now, and I can just come in here um, on the top level menu. You can really put this wherever you want, but I've got it at the bottom of my top level menu, and then simply click it. So once that happens, you're gonna see this shutdown RPI, and then the screen's gonna go blank. And pretty much once that happens, uh, 
you know, the Pi has gone into a shutdown sequence and within a few seconds you can safely just come over and as I'm going to do here and pop the switch. So now you're safely shut down. You don't have to worry about corrupting your SD card. All right, now that I've demonstrated some of the functionality on the menu with the screen, um, I'd like to go ahead and cover what all the changes are that you're going to need to be aware of and the, some of the configuration steps. I want to understand how the menu config works. And this is on the, the GitHub, so um, for Clipper. Um, you're not going to want to individually change this, but you will want to be aware of it because you're going to want to know how to override these defaults. So in here you can see all the defaults and how it's structured. And this is going to be the basis of your display configuration. Okay, now I'm going to walk through a few of the configuration files. First one, of course, that everybody has is a printer.cfg file. And in this file, you can see that I've got several include statements. The first one is this display encoder.cfg. And the second one is the display menu.cfg. You can name them whatever you want, but that's what I named mine. So the display encoder.cfg I touched on in my first video. And this is going to give you some basic settings for your display. But the settings that I mentioned as well earlier in this video, this is how you get rid of the smearing effect if you see those vertical stripes in your display. So 31 seemed to be about right for VCOM H setting. And the second one is how you center your display or move it over if you need to. So that's the X offset. I'm going to talk about the display menu.cfg file, which is what I use to override some of the options in the menu.cfg file, which is the stock uh, configuration. So you can see there's a little bit of a format here, and, and you really have to kind of dig in to understand some of the syntax. But basically, these entries in here are going to give you what you need to do. Um, you can see that you know we've got kind of this high-level main menu, then we've got a temp submenu, and then a pre preheat ABS option, and this is what we're going to call a list. So if you want to make a custom menu, this is the syntax and how you do it. And, and these, in this case, both main and temp have to exist in order to get a preheat ABS menu. And then we're just going to give it the name, which is preheat ABS, and then the index is the pos position that it's going to show up on the list. So in my case, I want ABS to be one of the first options, higher than PLA and PETG. And I also have uh, TPU down here as well. So um, that, that's just kind of how you order things. This index is, for me, it's kind of important because, um, you know, like I didn't want the, the cooldown to show up in between or up ahead. So I ended up putting that as item number seven, as you can see down here. The other thing that you're going to notice is there are some items like, um, let's say this preheat PETG all. This is a menu type command. So that means it's actually going to do something. There's also this enable syntax here, and there's a, a syntax that allows you to make sure that you're able to preheat those extruders in that heater bed. So the other thing I'll call out here is that you have to have a heater bed and extruder defined in your printer.cfg file, which if you're using the stock 4 on 0 settings, uh, you should have that, so you shouldn't have to do anything. If you're not, then just go ahead and change these entries anywhere you see the presence of extruder and heater bed to what you've defined already in the printer.cfg file. Last but not least, um, you can see some, some additional custom commands like the bed leveling that I put in here. So, uh, there, you know, I, so for my particular bed leveling, I put in here on start, which I showed in the video earlier. It's going to do a G28, which is going to home, and then it's going to run the bed screws adjust command which is native in Clipper. So that, that's how that runs. The syntax you use there is you say it's a type command. You give it a name that's going to show up, and then um, you put the G code in. And then something else that I really like, and I had to do a little detective work on, is the shutdown. So the shutdown um, code here is what allows you to turn off the Raspberry Pi and to shut it down safely where the SD card won't corrupt. So once you click that, you probably just want to wait a few seconds for the screen to go blank and then for the SD card to finish writing, and then you can sa safely power down your uh, Voron printer. Okay, well, I really hope you've enjoyed my Voron Zero screen series and just been able to learn about some of the ways to customize it and get some use out of it, how you want to use your machine. There's certainly a lot more that you can do with this, and there are certainly probably better ways to go about customizing it. I know um, there's definitely a rabbit hole you can go down and you might want to do things more dynamically with code, maybe read from some of your other configuration for the temperature 
and so on and so forth. That's definitely a possibility, but I wanted to make it simple and something that just about anybody could make a quick copy of and get up and running. So as always, if you found this helpful, um, I'd love to hear from you. Please comment. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel as well, and I'd really appreciate a like on the video if you found this useful. So thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner, and happy printing.